Hey guys, this is Josh from the Vegan Cooks Passport. Usually I'm cooking a vegan version of a national dish from around the world, but this time I'm going to be showing you how to light a cold barbecue the Chilean way. So I used to live in Chile for about four years and probably the most useful thing I took away from that was knowing how to light a barbecue. So I'm going to show you how to do a full safe method of lighting a coal barbecue. If you want that incredible charcoal grilled taste, then you need a coal barbecue. Right, what do you need to do this? You need a barbecue. So this is just a normal kettle barbecue. It costs about 50 Australian dollars. It's not expensive. Um, you want, if you want to get all fancy pants with the barbecue, you can get one of those sort of, you can spend as much money as you like on it, but really this is all you need. Um, pretty basic. What else do you need? Right, you need coal, pretty obviously. Again, you can spend a lot of money on fancy coals. This is just your bog standard barbecue coal. Um, you need a bottle, glass or plastic is fine. Um, one liter, two liter bottle. I like to get the ones which are straight here, and I'll show you why in a sec. Um, not that those wavy ones. If that's all you've got, that's fine, you can use that as well, but I like the sort of straight ones. And like I said, glass or plastic, not a problem. Um, you need some newspaper, and you need a fire-making device, like a lighter, matches. Probably not a flamethrower, that's probably a bit too much, but one of these, one of these things will do. Right, I'll show you how to, how to do this. And like I said, this is the foolproof method of, of, of making a barbecue. I haven't come across any, any technique that beats what I'm about to show you now. Oh, and don't mind Vogue. Uh, she's also interested in how to do this. And uh, she's also vegan, so part of the clan. You roll up bits of the newspaper like this doesn't have to be too neat and then you make a little circle and you tie it off like that so what you've got there is a nice little circle and you're going to place that Ooh, let's make that a little bit tighter actually you're going to place that conveniently over the top of the bottom like that so that's number one you just keep on doing that. You probably want about five or six rings. So let's do that. Right, so when I said five or six before, that was a bit too much. Four is fine, I've just realized. So once you made this funny little tower, break into your coal. Oh, God. Ugh. Oh, yes. All right, you get your coal, and you start building it up. And essentially what you want to do is, you just want to get the coal up and around. Now if you've got any wood that you want to put in the barbecue, this is a good time to do it as well. So sort of intermingle some like wood splinters amongst the coal as well. Uh, I don't have any wood on hand, but if I did, I'd be going on the barbecue. Right, so you can see what this is supposed to look like. Now you might be thinking, why have I assembled this on the bit of the grill where you're supposed to put your food? And you'd be right. And the reason I've done that is because I think that um, you, you probably wouldn't be able to see it as well if I did it where you're actually supposed to do it. It's definitely not because I did that by mistake. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is put it on the bit that you're supposed to do. But just so you can see it, that is textbook formation right there. Okay, so that's how it's supposed to look. Now, what we're gonna do is pull out, gently pull out the bottle, which is why I said I like the straight bottles and not those wavy ones, because you have the wavy ones that kind of they can mess everything up a bit. You can still do it with a wavy one, that's fine. Um, and then what you're gonna be left with is like a, a tunnel of, uh, of newspaper with, uh, where the air is allowed to go. That's important, you need airflow. Airflow is key for this. So if you've got one of the things at the bottom where you can open and shut it, make sure that's open because you need the airflow to be going. Right, let's gently pull this out. The coals might disassemble a little bit, but it's not really a big deal. You can uh, deal with that later. There we go. Yeah, man. 
coming. Oh yeah. Okay, another tip. You've got these briquette things. Get one of them, bash it up a bit, and and break it into pieces, and then sort of sprinkle that like you had a bit of salt. Sprinkle that around there. Now that sounds a bit stupid, but the reason is that's going to catch on fire a little bit before the bigger the bigger ones. So that's going to help everything just get get moving. So I'm going to crush this up. There we go. You see. So these can just sort of be liberally sprinkled, sort of in. You can even put it. You can even put it in there. That's fine. Just chuck it in there. So. As you can see, that's kind of what it's supposed to look like. Now let's light, let's light her up. Now what you want to do when you're lighting, this is pretty self-explanatory but whatever, like you want to try and light it from the bottom. If you light the top, that's just going to burn the top bit. So try and maybe get a piece of paper like this, use your uh, fire machine to chuck that in there. Give it a bit of a blow. There we go. So that's going to be raging a bit. You may need to make sure that the air keeps on keeps on circulating. So give it a blow every now and again. Um, the coals will fall off a little bit, but that's fine. You want it to sort of collapse a bit, and then make sure the coals are sort of around the flame. Now it's okay if some of the coals come into the middle, but make sure there's still like a passageway of air going up and down. So the technique from here is just keep blowing. Keep blowing. If you've got one of those weird air things, use that. If not, use your lungs. Okay, there is one more piece of equipment I forgot to mention before, which is a piece of cardboard, kind of stiff like this. So once you've got the embers sort of going in the middle, but you still haven't managed to light the, 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 the briquettes around the side, get a piece of cardboard from wherever and just go at it like this. This is better than blowing because if your lung capacity is good enough to do this, then just go for it. But this is the best method for just getting that fire going. And once a couple of briquettes get going, the rest of them will follow. <sighs> Whew. Okay, you probably can't see this from there, but they're definitely the, 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 the briquettes at the bottom definitely caught on fire. And actually I can see the little bits that I sprinkled on top. They're the ones that caught on fire first, and they're the ones that sort of helping all the other, all their other bigger friends to uh, join the party. Can you take my hoodie off, please? Yeah. All right, as you can see, it's coming together nicely. Um, as the more and more of the briquettes start lighting, you can just gather the ones which are on the outside, which are still not lit, and just start sort of putting them into the middle. So you've got to like, you know, take it as it comes, be a bit flexible, keep waving this thing. So you can see I've taken my hoodie off because this is actually quite um, quite strenuous activity, but that's good. You're doing a bit of exercise as well as lighting a lovely barbecue. Obviously, when what you want is you want all of the briquettes to have gone white, but you don't really want any flames there because that's probably going to burn your food. So once all the briquettes are more or less lit, you've got to uh, pan them out, chuck the grill on top, and then start cooking. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe to my channel, and uh, happy, happy barbecuing.